Tested him throughout the course of time. So many still reach out to him with broken hearts and minds. And every one of them will say, without exception, that they find Jesus never fails. Even in the days of old, he brought his people through and then he came to show Amen. his love and died for me and you and then he rose again to prove that every story has been true jesus never fails jesus never You might as well get thee behind me, Satan, you cannot prevail, because Jesus never fails. Sometimes this world brings trouble I find so hard to bear. I know I could not make it without Jesus being there. It's so encouraging. 
every chain to know, however deep we're in despair, Jesus never fails. So what can I do to prove to you? Tell me how can you deny? No one told facts, no mysteries. It's all stand of your life I'll be the first to testify Jesus never fails Jesus never fails Jesus never fails, Jesus never fails. You might as well Satan, you cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. Cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. Lately, I've been looking back along this winding road to the old familiar marker. Of the mercies I have known And though it may sound simple It's more than a cliche There's no other words to tell you but to say God's been good in my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't trade one if I could go through it all. God's been good. And time moves on and I can see I've cried some bitter tears. But I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears. I've had more gains than losses. I've known more joy than hurt as his grace rolls down upon me undeserved. God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't trade one if I could. Cause through it all, God's been good. God has been my father. He's my savior and my friend. His love was my beginning and his love will be my end. I could spend forever trying to tell you everything he's been, but the best way I can say it is like this. God's been good. dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't trade one if I could go through it all. God's been good. Say amen. What a blessing it is uh, to feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, one thing that I see figured out how to do church without God. 
And I've come to the conclusion I don't want to do church without God. Oh, how we need Him tonight. Acts chapter number 20, if you will. I have a message on my heart and I have my future in-laws here and I definitely don't want to preach a rough message in front of them until we say our I do's and all that good stuff next week. Uh, but I, I, I found out if I just follow Jesus, everything will be all right. And so Acts chapter number 20, I need help from heaven and I, I'll ask y'all to pray with me, please. Uh, Lord, I love you. Thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity to preach your word. Thank you, Lord, for the season, man of God, Brother Johns, I have served his congregation many years. I pray bless him, bless this church, and God, I can't help nobody, but your Bible can, and God, I pray, won't you just please help us, God? Lord, I humble myself at Calvary, realizing if anybody's going to get help, it's going to come from you. And God, I pray, won't you please give us liberty, give us option, help us to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Lord, this message you laid in my heart is a warning. Help me to preach it in the heart of love. Help me not to have flesh with boldness. But Lord, help me to uh, line up with your word and everything I say and do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you found your place, can you please stand as we read God's word for just a little while. Uh, verse number 28 says, uh, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer. Had to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. I'm glad he bought us. Um, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. I want to read verse 29 again. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. You can be seated. Uh, here in our text you find that God warns the man of God and the man of God warns the church. I'm thankful that God is still doing that. He warns the man of God and the man of God pours out the warning uh, to the people of God. Uh, but here in our text we see three categories. Uh, first of all, we see the flock in our text. And I want to say ever since the Lamb of God washed me in His blood, I became a lamb in the flock of God. I'm glad I'm part church tonight. Uh, the church is the flock of God. It's the body of Christ. It's the a bride of Christ. Somebody said in 2020 the church has drowned. But for something to drown, the head has to go under. Christ is the head of the church. He ain't going in under his time uh, soon. Uh, so I thank God to save the church. You need the church. I need the church. It's a hospital for the heart. It's a, it's a church. Uh, and next of all in our text we saw the flock. I want you to see the feeders of uh, these under shepherds. We know God's the good shepherd. But he has designed the under shepherds which was God's men uh, to feed the flock. Lead the flock. Take oversight of the flock. I want to remind you if you have a pastor that loves you and leads you and guides you and prays for you and takes oversight of the church. You need to thank God for that man of God. Thankful for that, but we also find a next category. So I'm going to be preaching in a little while. Uh, watch this now. We saw the flock. We see the feeders. It says this in verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. My next category I'm going to look at is the facades. Jesus said, we rare false prophets that come to you in a sheep's clothing. But innerly, they are raving and wolves. Yeah. What Jesus was saying was, they're fakes, they're phonies. They have a form of godliness, yeah. but denying the power thereof. They have a form of righteousness, but they're empty. And I, and I want to tell you this, I wish I can tell you that everybody in our churches is a lamb, but the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of wolves. Yeah. Exactly right.
it. You might not share it. Something else about the wolves is, uh, so many times, the old preachers used to say that they walked the line of the hen house fence. They walk up and down that line. Walk up and down that line. And I'm gonna, I just want to say something to the young people. You better watch out for people that just want to live on the line. Right. Yeah. That's right. You better watch out for young people that just want to spend their whole life not fully sold out to God, but not in the world either. Right. Yeah. 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 What are you saying, preacher? Long before Samson went down to get him a Philistine bride, and that defiled his vows that he made before God, he went down to Timnath. Timnath is a border city. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid to tell. I just want to say this, just because I love you. Somebody can live online for 50 years, they're not a lamb. No. Exactly right, preacher. Something else about this you find in the Old Testament that the enemies of the sheep you find is the lion and the bear. Uh, but the only enemy of the sheep that Christ preached about is the wolf, okay? I want to tell you this. Uh, the devil so many times sees a picture of the lion, right? God's omnipresent. You hear me? He can help you. He can help me. He can help everyone else. Yes. Uh, but the devil's not on the crest. No, he can only attack one at a time. But you know what's scary about those wolves? Wolves cover more ground than Satan himself. Right? You're right. We blame a lot of the damage on the church, on Satan, when in reality, those wolves are among us. Oh, we assume everybody's saved. Mm -hmm. We assume everybody's born again. But Paul said, those wolves within the church. Something else about these wolves is the, 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 the thing that they use to do the most damage is their mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I can take my glasses off, not see how many of you are looking at me, and just preach away when it gets too rough. Preach out. What are you saying? I'm saying this. I mean, so many times when Jesus was talking about the wolves, um, so many times when he was referring to wolves, I believe he was talking about the Pharisees. You find uh, that the Pharisees confronted this woman, and buddy, they was laying on her with their mouths. I mean, they were ripping her to pieces. But Jesus came and he stooped down, and he wrote a message in the sand. And some people said it was a message of grace. I believe it was for her, but I believe it was a message of judgment for them. Amen. Can I tell you something? I get sick and tired every time God's about to send a revival. The wolves always use their mouth to snuff out the fire. Every time. Can I tell you something? The Lord has a message to judge for those wolves. Something else about the wolves. I move on. How about something else about it is that when they attack an under shepherd, when they attack the shepherd, they surround him and they get him any way they can get him. Can I tell you something? I'm sick and tired of wolves taking out a man of God. That's right. They bring up, they throw up the finances and reality. You add up the average man of God puts in, the pastor's underpaid. So many times, young people, you want to give your pastor peace of your mind. You want to give your pastor's wife peace of your mind. You don't like the standards they preach. You don't like the standards they live. But you know what? You know you can't so you take it out on his children. I'm not preaching the right way of the lamb. I want to tell you, that's not an attitude of a lamb. That's right. That's right. Amen. 
to see this now the warning for I know this after my departing shall grievous wolves entering among you what he's saying is not everybody that looks like you right. talks like you <laughs> appears like you is born again right. Right. and can I tell you something somebody's going to have to blow the whistle on the wolves and if it's me then hallelujah but I'm telling you something right now we need to realize and we need to know that the church is in danger Oh, yes. oh, yes. Something else now, except for I know this, without a doubt, there's something else. I just want I just want to give you the main points and I'm finished. Um, but watch this now. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock uh, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. Amen. My next point is the worth of the flock. Mm -hmm. The worth of the flock. Yes. The flock was worth so much that Jesus Christ yes. said to him, Come and believe and die and purchase the church with his own blood. Yes. And can I say you have a good youth group, you have a good pastor, you have a good church. It's worth holding on to you. It's worth wearing the wolves off. It's worth standing in the first. It's worth staying in the water. Yes. It's worth it. Yes. The church is worth something. Yes. Amen. 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 Here's the thing. A lot of times, and I preach and I seen pastors get saved. I saw deacons get saved. I saw pastors' wives get saved. You know why? Because sometimes wolf wear sheep clothing long enough that they commit themselves they're a sheep and they're not. Right. Good. And ask yourself. It's time to get honest with yourself. Maybe right. you're here tonight and everybody thinks you're saved, but you know deep in your heart you're not. You know you're not you know you're not right. You know you're not part of the flock of God. I have something else now. I want you to see last when I'm finished. I want you to see the wrath of the wolves. Oh Lord, help us. Watch this now. Um, feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. I want to tell you something. The wolves, here's something. The wolves, they like to attack the walk. They always attack the legs first. And can I tell you what we're trying to do when they destroy our walk? We're trying to destroy our influence with the world. Right. You hear me? There's people in our churches and they just blend in, but their intake says wolf. What they eat says wolf. You hear me? Hey. How they have their ears lean back and everybody's business says wolf. Right. Oh my. Come on. Everything about them says wolves. The craving says wolves. Wolves. Preach that. Good preaching. I believe if we truly get a burden for our church, we realize yeah. our church is in danger. There's wolves among us. Brother Abraham, finish. And the preacher.
showed me I was wrong and he placed me on the Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I will never have a fear, for my Lord is ever near. And so often in Him I confide. He's the keeper of my soul since I gave Him full control. And he placed me on the winning side. I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. No more in sin will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. No more in sin will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. This is chapter number three tonight. What a joy it is to be in God's house. I love the church, don't you? Thank God for the church. Good to be born again. Thank you, young Timothy, for the message tonight. And I appreciate the good word of God. I thank every one of us that are saved ought to just stand up and shout and thank God that we're not wolves. Amen. 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 Yeah. Wolves feed on the flesh of the innocent. Amen. Revelation chapter number three. Let's stand in reverence to the reading of the King James Bible. Thank you, Brother Avery, for the invitation to be here. Pastor Isaac Johns, it's always an honor to be in your presence. As a man of God, been preaching as long as you have. I salute you, dear brother. Thank God for the testimony of the pastor and the testimony and the heritage of this church. Amen. You can go anywhere in the surrounding states and you can hear the testimony of Pastor John's. What a blessing that is, these elder men of God, and I say that with respect. I say it with great respect. These elder men of God, we have our camp meeting the third Sunday in September every year. And I'm always looking for the elder men of God that's walked with God to come preach for us, especially at the first part of the week. I refuse to put them on a shelf. I refuse to be a part of a generation that shuts the elder men of God up. I think they've got something that needs to be said and we need to hear it. I used to, as a younger preacher, I'd listen to an older man get up and he'd stammer around and he'd uh, stutter around and, and the boy, people would come to the altar and get saved. They'd get up and say some of the simplest things and I'm sitting there, I could have done said that 50 times. I could have done run laps and preached 40, 11 points and been done with it. But the difference is these elder men of God, they've been with the shepherd long enough to know where to get a drink of water that some of us young folk ain't found out yet. Somebody say amen right there. And I appreciate you, brother. And I hate I missed Brother J.E. Glass's funeral, one of my heroes, Brother Glass. I appreciate that, dear man of God. I want what these older men have got, don't you? Amen. I want the touch of God in my life. Amen. Amen. So some of you know me, some of you don't. So uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't look at me like I had a booger hanging out my nose tonight. And, 
Just get with me, all right? Amen. I'm saved and I got a King James Bible and I got one living wife. Somebody say amen right there. And I'm bought with a price, I'm born again and free from sin. Amen. So let's go to meeting. I promise you I'll tell you like Elizabeth Taylor told her seventh husband right before she married him. I'm not planning on keeping you long tonight, all right? Revelation chapter number three. Bible said in verse number one, and under the angel of the church at Sardis, right? These things saith he that hath the seven spirits spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful. Here's our talk, thought tonight. And strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they, shall, they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white and raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. His fathers, we bow in your presence. Lord, I submit myself to your Lordship one more time this side of eternity. Lord, I want your touch more than anything tonight. Lord, we need your presence and we need your power. God, I don't ask thee for power to perform, but I ask thee for power to preach. And I ask thee, O righteous God, that you'd have everybody listening tonight to open up the hearts to the word of God. Those that you've already dealt with about being lost, God, I pray you'd continue to deal with them and draw. And I pray they'd repent and believe the gospel and be born again tonight. God, I pray you'd send revival to this church and we'll bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated tonight. I will not labor any kind of lengthy introduction tonight. I simply want to get our thought from verse number two. When the Bible said, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. And I want to preach just simply on this subject tonight. Strengthen the things which remain. Uh, I could go back 25, 30 years tonight and talk about how it used to be, but uh, I really think we ought to focus on how it is tonight. Uh, my heart is with the nation of Israel when they wept, when they remember Zion sometimes, but in order to strengthen the things which remain, uh, uh, we've got to take a brief look at the things we've lost. And, uh, but as we look at the things we've lost, uh, uh, we've got to make sure we focus on what we've got left. Amen? Because if all you look at is what we've lost, then you're going to get defeated, you're going to get depressed, you're going to get discouraged. But aren't you glad tonight that the devil hasn't stripped us of everything, that the world hasn't got it all, that there's some things left, and that God has said strength in those things which remain. Amen. First of all, tonight as we evaluate what we got left, and that word strength it means to make stable, it means to fix, it means to confirm one's mind as we stabilize and we fix what we've got left. Amen. And I believe every one of these Baptist churches in these old countries, uh, old country churches like we've got tonight, I believe when we built these churches, we should have put a revolving door on the back of it. Amen. We got so many people coming in and coming out and not staying with it and moving and changing. Uh, uh, but brother, let's take a look at what we got left. Uh, he said under the angel, uh, uh, first of all, let's talk about the pastors that we've got left. Uh, uh, neighbor, that angel, there's the pastor uh, of that local church that God uh, uh, was sending this letter to. Uh, and brother, it's the church's responsibility uh, to make sure the man of God uh, is strengthened. Uh, amen. Somebody say amen right there. I know he's got to encourage himself in the Lord uh, uh, like David did when they lost it. Hey, Amen. And get a word from God. And walk with God on their own. But the church has got a responsibility to help strengthen the man of God. We're to hold up his hands. We ain't to pull him down. We're to be a blessing. Not to be a burden. To the man of God. We're to be there. To scotch him up. And to help him out. And to be a blessing. To the man of God. Amen. 
pile up people that are a blessing to the preacher, don't you? God, I'll never forget about 15 years ago, I, I was preaching with Brother Jeff Plemons. And I got up preaching on everybody's look on their face. Hey, man, I, hey, man, and hey, some of you sit here tonight. I love you with all my heart. Hey, man, but you can smile. Your face will not break. I mean, they some folk look like as baptized in vinegar, born on the backside of the moon in crab apple season, look like their mother-in-law just moved in eternally. Look, brother, I'm telling you, it ain't all doom and gloom. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. But one day I was up preaching against them sourpuss looks. Oh, brother, Plemons got up after me. He said, I used to do the same thing, brother John. He said, then I started focusing on the people that were smiling at me and saying amen to me and getting with me while I was preaching. So if I don't look at you too much tonight, that means I ain't much to look at. But if I'm paying attention to you tonight, you're helping me while I preach. And brother, it's that crowd that has got their hands in the air and a look on their face. That's Sam preach. That man of God preach. Great God, we got to get with a man of God. We got to, amen, shout him on while he's a preaching. Holler amen every once in a while. Hey, well, brother John, that's not just my personality. I, I, if I was a betting man, amen, I'd put money that if I took you to your favorite college football team, amen, to your favorite NFL team, or your favorite basketball team, or if we went over to the volleyball game, or the basketball game at the local Christian academy, you'd be up shouting, up when your children slam dunk a basketball. But when your preacher been walking with God, you want to sit there like Elijah the Wooden Indian. Up with a bless me if you can attitude. I say our churches are to get right with God tonight and fall back in love with preaching and shout the man of God on and encourage God's man. Yep, yeah, man. My preacher preaches too long. We'll start saying amen while he's preaching. It'll shorten him up. Amen. Y'all want me to get done quick tonight? Amen. The more excited you get, the, fire, the more fired up I'm going to get. Amen. And I won't preach long, I promise you. Uh, neighbor, we've got to strengthen. There's three ways that we strengthen the man of God. How are we going to do it? First of all, we got to pray for him. we got to get on our knees and talk to God about the man of God. Oh, Paul said in the book of Ephesians, we got to pray. I mean, every air of his life. We need to pray every time that he opens his Bible. God will give him a message. Every time he prays, God will breathe on him. Every time he gets in the pulpit, God will help him. Amen. We need to pray that God will touch him and give him boldness. That every time he opens his mouth, he can make known the mystery of the gospel. That God will give him boldness to deal with sin and blow the devil out the back door. That God will give him grace to have the message. To put the food on the table. Amen. To feed the flock of God like we've already heard about tonight. We have got to pray for the pastor. I don't know how you pray for your preacher, but this is how I pray for mine. I get in there praying for my man of God, and I don't pray for him right out of the bat. I want to make sure I'm in the presence of God. But when I'm praying for my preacher, I say, Lord, you'd feed him as he feeds us. Lord, would you lead him as he leads us. Lord, would you read him as he reads us. Lord, every time he opens his Bible, give him a nugget. Every time he prays, God, give him a nugget. Lord, I pray that you'd help nobody in the church to be a burden to him and to pull him down. Lord, and I pray when it comes to my family and he's praying for me and my wife and my three children. Lord, I pray he wouldn't get mad, but he'd get glad and he'd get blessed. Lord, we'd be an encouragement to him. We'd be a blessing to him. Lord, we'd be a friend to him. Let God help his wife fill it with the Holy Ghost. Let there be a unified spirit between him and his wife. I know the devil wants to ruin that relationship. Lord, I pray that you'd touch his children. Amen. And help there be a unified spirit in the family. God bless his children. Bless his marriage. Lord, bless him financially. God tell him, help him to stay in the spirit of prayer. Help him to stay in the spirit of praise. I pray and go to bed preaching. I pray and wake up preaching. God bless the man of God. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down tonight? Amen. We want the power of God on our preachers, but we won't take 30 seconds and pray for him every day. The church ought to be ashamed for the lack of prayer that's going up for the man of God. Can I get a witness right there? Praise God. God, I enjoyed that prayer meeting we had when the service started out. It's been a while since I've been at a church where men actually pray out loud anymore. Somebody say amen right there. Brother, I tell you, we better get fired back up in our prayer meetings. Amen to God. Somebody help! 
me now. I tell you what, we need to strengthen the man of God by praying for him. Then we got to strengthen him by practicing what he preaches. Amen. I like the amens and I like the hallelujahs and I like the smiles on your face and I like to hear you pray and I love that good choir singing tonight and I love the good bass playing and the good guitar picking and the good song leading tonight. Amen. And the good moderating tonight. Amen. Boy, what a good spirit in the church house tonight. Amen. But I tell you, if you want to strengthen your pastor, it's going to go further than a shout. It's going to go further than picking a guitar. It's going to go further than being faithful three times a week and to revive a meeting. That man, it's going to be more than patting him on the back and saying that's the best I ever heard. I tell you what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to put what he preaches in shoe leather and practice what's preached and be a Christian in here and be a Christian out there. When he preaches on prayer, go pray. When he preaches on witness and go witness. When he preaches on walking with God, walk with God. Practice what the preacher says. Amen. Amen. I, I don't believe in God's men lording over God's heritage. You, you lead them right, they'll follow you right, and the sheep will follow the sheep will follow the uh, the pastor, and the wolves will fall out. Say amen right there. I believe that's why I ever shepherd ought to have a shotgun with buckshot in it, and a wolf pops his head up. Brother Timothy, blow it off. Amen. Send him on out the back door, crying to his mama. Can I get a witness right there? Amen to God. I feel like preaching a little bit up in here. Brother, I tell you, you just practice what he preaches. Amen. The pastor can stand up and say, hey, Brother John, you don't know my congregation. I love going to a church and preaching revival where I've never been. And I love it, Brother Earwood. When the pastor said, I was preaching for an old time man of God years ago. Hey, hey brother, brother, brother Wade Huntley, I don't know if you ever know Brother Wade over in North Carolina, pastor in that church for over 60 years, I believe it was. Had revival back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and 90s, and even the early 2000s. Went to heaven here a few years ago. I went down there and visited him one Sunday night. He asked me, he said, you want to preach? I said, yeah, I'd be glad to preach. And we were sitting there, and the choir was singing. He was pointing people out in the choir. He said, now that one comes over the church and prays every day, Brother John. That one's been praying for this church for years. He said, you see that one right there? He's a state trooper, but he didn't lose his shout. He still worships God. He still walks with God. He's a fine preacher, and he's pointing people out in his church that walk with God that bless him. It wasn't in a proud way. It was in a godly way. And brother, that's a way that the man of God ought to be able to do is look out over the congregation and say, glory to God, that crowd's blessed me. Help me. And if all you ever do is focus on what you've lost or what's burdening you, you will get discouraged in a heartbeat. Can I get a witness right there? Hey, man, there have been a lot of times I've looked at my problems, and God forgive me, but problems in the ministry and problems in the church a few times, and I'm just going to be transparent tonight. Some of you might not be this honest, but sometimes our problems have got bigger to us than our God is to us. Oh, but brother, when I go to look at the blessings. Amen. The blessings outweigh the burdens of a million to one. The good times outweigh the bad times. Amen. God's been better to me. A whole lot better to me than the devil's been bad to me. And the world's been bad to me. You looking at a blessed man of God tonight. You looking at a man that God never blessed me again. I'd have to shout over away from here to glory. Thank God he's been good. Amen to God. That's the Lord. Oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has been good. So I cannot as an evangelist spend my days thinking about the preachers that won't use me. Say amen right there. I ain't for everybody and I ain't for every church. I cannot spend my days thinking about the people that sow discord on me. I can't spend my days thinking about the men that the devil's put in my life that have tried to destroy my ministry. I cannot. All I can think of is that I asked God to help me to be a Christian years ago. How to be Christ-like in every area of my life. He was falsely accused. They nailed him to a cross. They tried to run him out. They tried to shut his message up. You think we're going to be any better than Jesus? 
This world ain't going to accept us. And most Baptists ain't even going to accept us. And as a pastor, you can't sit around crying about the people you've lost. Yes, it hurts. I don't want to belittle that. There have been many a men of God uh, cried their, shed their tears on my shoulder. I didn't tell them to suck it up and get over it, but I did tell them there's going to come a day up when you're going to have to focus on that crowd that stayed with you. Hey, man, and you can't, if you got a handful of children in the home, you can't focus on that one that broke your heart, that ripped your heart out. What about that crowd that's still with you? What about them ones that's still singing and still loving God and still going to church? We've got to focus on the blessings of life. Can I get an amen right there? Well, I got a little sidetracked, but that's okay. You got to, if you're going to strengthen your pastor, you're going to have to pray for him. You're going to have to practice what he preaches. You want to strengthen your pastor, shout him on while he's a preaching. You want to be a strength to your pastor. Now, don't get quiet. If you get quiet right here, I'm going to get me a, I'm going to get me a permanent magic marker and I'm going to start walking around writing wolf on your head, okay? If you get quiet on this point, we're going to know something's wrong with you. You need to pay his bills. Amen or not? You mean we supposed to pay the man of God? I know this is a good church with a good testimony, but maybe you need a friendly reminder tonight, okay? I've been preaching pastor appreciation just about every week somewhere here lately, and it's on me, amen? I tell you, the man of God ought to be took care of, ought to take care of his bills, make sure he got clothes on his back, his house is paid for, his power bill's paid for. I told y'all, y'all better not get quiet on me right here. We'll know what kind of person you are. Let's send him on a vacation. Make sure he got clothes on his back, food in his cupboard, and take care of the man of God. He ought to be the best paid of man in town. All right now, all right. Some of y'all was shouting a minute ago on that blessing business, but you pouting now, amen. I'll come on up in here with me. What's the problem? Hey, man, you go to work, you expect your boss to pay you, and you expect a vacation, and you expect insurance. Hey, man, and you expect when you get sick to be able to lay out and still get paid, don't you? Do you not? Somebody say amen right there. I tell you right now, we ought to take care of the man of God, especially if somebody's paid a price and paved the way like this. Are you talking about a blessing, Brother Aver Johns? If I was you, I'd shout from here to Goobertown, Arkansas, and back that I had a granddaddy that paved the way for you like he has. Amen. Just fought the battles that's laid the foundation that's fought with God that ain't quit that stayed with God be God to the man of God don't wait till he's in heaven to pin roses on him I do not know why I do not know why the elder men of God put their hands on me like they did I don't know why Brother Samuel loved me the way he did. I don't know why Brother Stennett and Brother Fane Jordan. I don't know why old Brother Preacher Reigns and them men of God. They loved me. They pulled me up under the wings. I don't know why they did. What did they let me preach for them? I mean, I'd get up, boy, and I'd... Well, it was rough at times, amen. And it needs to be rough, but I was just playing out mean a time or two. And... Uh, I didn't really know how to let God love people through me as a young preacher. Took me years to figure out that the Holy Ghost is shed abroad. The little love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And if I'm going to love anybody, it's going to be God loving them through me. Yeah, right. You've got to be an open vessel as a preacher to let that take place. As a matter of fact, Timothy, you fix and get married. The only way you're going to love that woman God's going to let you marry is open your heart up and let the Holy Ghost love her through you, That's buddy. Right, buddy. Vice versa with the lady. And you can't love them on your own. You can't love your wife on your own. You can't love your husband on your own. We can't love church members on our own. It's God. And I'm going to tell you what real preaching is. It's wrapping your arms around the congregation and lifting them up to God and letting God love on a man. I'm telling you, take care of the man of God. Strengthen him. Be good to him. Be his friend. I'm telling you, we got a man of God left. We better make sure we do our part to make him as strong as we possibly can. Moses wouldn't have been nothing without his congregation. Well, Joshua could have had something by himself, but it'd just been him all by himself going across the River Jordan. Say amen right there. 
You ain't nothing without your wife, ain't nothing without your husband, ain't nothing without your family. And us preachers, we ain't going to be nothing without our congregations. Somebody say, that's why we preach the way we do. That's why the warnings go out like they do. Strengthen the things which remain. You got a good man of God. I'm going to tell you, the judgment of God, the judgment of God. The reason a lot of these churches, even in this area, it's the same way back where I'm from. I got some people, I got, we got Brother Earwood married a lady from up in our part of the woods. I guess the same county right at it. You can go, you can drive half a mile any direction you want to and you'll run into two or three Baptist churches somewhere. And they either ain't got a pastor or the ones they got a bunch of compromising liberals that don't walk with God. You know what God did? God took his angel out of that church. God took his man out of that church and left them to themselves. Yeah, enough, enough, enough backslid, mossy back deacons get together and they want the church. God will let you have it. Enough backslid song leaders want to get together and take a church. God will let you have it, but it'll be Ichabod Baptist Church without God's touch on it. And for God to send a real man to pastor a real church is a gift from God. I'm talking about a gift from God. A gift. And we can't let that go to us preachers' head. We walk in, oh, I'm God's gift. Yeah, well, no, you can't be thinking that. You've got to humble yourself. Humble yourself up underneath the mighty hand of God. Well, we got a pastor left. But what's next in our text? He said, under the church. we got a church left. We need to strengthen the churches that are left. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the God's honest truth? Hey, now, now the preacher's got to do his part, and he preached to it and prayed for it himself. But it's a crying shame that most Baptist churches, get this, most Baptist churches in our day are for the most part living off the prayer life of their pastor and their pastor alone. Well, what if we took that away? And this church, Mr. and Mrs. Church member, and this church had to live on your prayer life and your prayer life alone. Would we be shutting the doors next week? Serious thing. I'm helping some people I love dearly with all my heart pray for their children. And it ain't gonna be no five minute lay me down to prayer. It ain't going to be none of this, oh Lord, I forgot. My youngin ain't right with God. No, it's going to be getting down, getting our sins confessed and calling on God. Yes, Amen. Church ain't never going to go higher in this prayer life. No. Hey, it's three simple truths that I want to give you, and I'm probably going to just finish with this, and I'm going to be quick. The church, we've got to strengthen the called pastor. We've got, a church, we've got to strengthen the church and the people that are within the church. He said, he said, he said, you, he said, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. That's a poor testimony, ain't it? We've got to strengthen the testimony of the church. Uh, the, the church, I'm at Canaan Land Baptist Church, it's my honor to be here. There's only one or two testimonies you can have as a church. There's no middle of the ground. You either got a good testimony as a church or a bad testimony as a church. What kind of testimony do you have as a church? What kind of testimony is your church? Dear pastor back here in the back with them babies, what kind of testimony does your church have? We've got a strength. He said, you got a name that you're alive, but you're dead. They may have had a testimony in the community that they had some life there, but God said, I know who you really are. You're dead. The hypocrisy, the fakeness, the plastic has got to hit the road. Here it is, here it is. I, I know there's going to be, we're, we're, we're human beings. At our best, we're still flesh. We're not perfect, but that does not give us grace to turn, uh, that does not give us liberty to turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. So if somebody fornicates in the church or commits adultery in the church and it's going to happen, I hate it. You'll have to deal with it sometime or another. 
That's one thing for it to happen. But for it to go undealt with, then that gives the church this kind of testimony. You can, you can fornicate and you can commit adultery. You can be a part of that swingers club all you want to. And they can even find out about it and they won't even church you over at that church. That's the testimony most Baptist churches has got in our day. That's why when somebody messes up over another church, they just don't need to go hop in churches. They need to get right with God right there and help restore the testimony of the church. Can I get an amen? I feel like preaching right here, buddy. I'm telling you, we don't need the church. We don't need the testimony of a gospel church. We don't need the testimony of a slandering tongue church. We don't need the testimony of a proud church, of an arrogant church. Man, I love them people over there, but they're so full of pride. Oh, it ain't even funny. I love them people over there, but you can't trust them with no sensitive information. You tell one, it'll be all over the world before morning. Amen. I'm telling you, we don't need, you don't need the testimony of the gospel church or slandering in church, a fornicating church, an adultery committing church, a drinking church, but we need the testimony of a godly church. Am I right? It ain't always about building a crowd. It's about building character and being conformed to the image of Christ. We got to strengthen the church's testimony. We need a testimony. I, I, God's blessed me with a good church. And we have our camp meeting once a year. You can ask Brother Earwood. If I had time and I had liberty, I'd get him to stand up. Him and his family were at camp meeting this year. Brother Avery and Sister Kenji was at camp meeting this year. You can embarrass me all you want to, okay, on this question. I'm fixing to ask. You can embarrass me. You can correct me. Rebuke the fire out of me, okay? I'm going to give you liberty to do so. Y'all reckon our church has got hospitable testimony? Do you reckon there was any charity to be found? Do you reckon there's any hospi hospitality to be found? Our people just want to work and serve. And my pastor is a great man of God. And he said, Brother John, if God told you to have that camp meeting, you have it. We'll get in there and back you up and do anything we can unheard of unheard of y'all picking up what I'm putting down and I ain't going to take advantage of it as the evangelist and I say it on my knees good sir I don't want to get full of pride I, I don't, I don't want to ever see any church get tired of taking on missionaries and get tired of giving to missions and get tired of having revivals and being good to men of God. Well, them evangelists came through. There wasn't no count. Well, these evangelists, missionaries, and pastors, it's crooked as a dog's iron leg. But that don't mean you got to throw every one of us in the same stinking wicked pot. Amen. 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 Yeah, you got a good, clean man of God. Yeah, you got good, clean people up in here. Yeah, keep it clean. I mean, you got to strengthen the testimony of the church. When a sinner stands up and says, I've had enough! And they come to you on the job and they say, I've had enough. I need God. And I know that probably everybody ain't equipped enough and that's to our shame equipped enough with Bible knowledge to take the word of God and lead somebody to God scripturally. That's a shame, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Ought to be able to take your Bible. It ought not, well, I got to call a preacher. But if that's all you got, that's good enough. Don't not call the preacher, okay? Right. Hey, pastor, I got this guy over here at work said he's sick of sin. What church would you recommend to him? What church would you say, hey, let's, let's take them over there because I know God's going to be there and God's going to deal with them and God's going to convict them and God's going to save them. That's the testimony our churches need to have. I'm talking about, he said, the, the strength of the things which remain that are ready to die. We don't really realize how, and I don't, don't take this wrong, okay? Please don't take this wrong. But dear brother, I don't know if I've ever met you in my life, but I think you'll agree with me on this. I really don't think we realize how close to spiritual death we really are in our Baptist churches. Amen. 
I got saved in December 31st, 1995. January the 1st, 1996 was my first saved born again day of my life. When I got born again, you could go to at least two camp meetings a month, sometimes three or four. And every one of them had the power of God in them. You could go to revival meeting. It didn't matter just about what church you went to. Yeah, they had the liberals and the mega churches. You didn't go to them. I'm talking about our good fundamental independent Baptist churches. You could go to them and God was there. Yeah. Yeah. Go to them now. Try to have a meeting now there. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Better churches than any church I've ever stood in and preached and have closed the doors and they're dead tonight. And they're not walking with God. And they're not winning sinners. And they're not preaching the gospel. We have got to get God's touch on the church again. We've got to strengthen the testimony. We've got to strengthen the touch of God. I'm getting ahead of myself tonight. I, I don't mean to be long-winded, but i got to preach the burden of my heart. We got to have God's. We talk about having God's touch. We talk about these men of God that had God's touch. They tell me, Brother Ed Baluka, or Brother Edgar Thomas could walk in over to Faith Baptist Camp. Said so they'd walk in, God walk in with them. People just start getting saved. That's God's touch on a man. But how come we don't hear nobody saying about God's touch on a church? Holy Spirit, when, he, when Jesus came in the incarnation, he came down. When he saved us, he came in. When he fills us, he comes out. But the rivers are so clogged up in our hearts and so dammed up with sin that the river of living water is not flowing through God's people like it ought to be. And I prayed several months ago. I said, God, would you give me a stick of Holy Ghost dynamite and let me blow it up that the river could flow again in my heart. The Holy Ghost spoke to me, Pastor Johns, and said, no, I'm not going to give you a stick of Holy Ghost dynamite. You built the dam piece by piece. You tear it down piece by piece. What's clogging the river up? It's got the hand of God off our churches. Well, I'm living in sin and it ain't hurting nobody but me. Oh, you saved and you're a born again member of this Baptist church. You grieving the Holy Ghost in this church. Nobody knows what I'm guilty of. God knows in the hand of God on us like he used to be. Am I the only one that's bothering anymore? Does it not bother us that God is backed off? We need God. We need God. We need to strengthen the touch. How can we do that? Get right with God. Get right with each other. We have got to strengthen the triumph of the church, the victory, the shout, the praise. You got to have faith. Our chapter bears witness in verse 2 that we got to watch. We've lost our discernment. It ought not just be the pastor when somebody back wrong or her a wolf, as young Timothy preached on a minute ago, when a wolf backs, walks in the back. It ought not just be the pastor get a red flag. Brother, you ought to get a red flag. And the song leader ought to get a red flag. And the deacons ought to get a red flag. And the church ought to say, you know what? Whoever this person is, wherever they came from, their spirit does not bear witness with ours. And we need not. I ain't for just meeting people at the back door and running them off unless you have to. Amen. Amen. There's some people. It, 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 this church ain't for everybody. If it is, it's a Laodicean church at best. God help us. You gotta strengthen the the victory of the church. We gotta have discernment. We gotta watch. We gotta keep it clean. We don't compromise. He said in verse six, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Most anymore. All you hear about is what the Holy Ghost is telling the pastor. And if you're blessed enough, you're hearing about what he's telling the Sunday school teacher. And if you're really blessed, you've got a song leader that's gonna mind the Holy Ghost and sing what? 
But this is to let him to have what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The Holy Ghost has got something to say to the churches, but we've got them so grieved and quenched, we can't hear them no more. We need to strengthen our called pastors, our church people. And then there's a cause to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. When that boy, when, when, when a battle comes, I still got my health, I still got my strength, still, still, still got God. If you lose everything, you lose your house, your job, your life, if you lose all of it, let me just remind you, you still got the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you can still tell somebody about the good grace of God and the free pardon of sin. It's still the best news that's ever been told. As cold waters are to a thirsty soul, so it's good news from a far country. Amen. We're standing all over the building, every head bowed, every eye closed, our pianist is going to come if that's okay, Brother Avery.